Welcome back. We are looking at the foreign exchange market, and in this video, we're going to look at five different currencies pairs the US dollar, the Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar, and the US dollar, the euro and the US dollar, the US dollar and yen, and the great British pound and the US dollar. So, this is going to be a technical analysis of these five currencies pairs. And before we start, I have to mention that in the last two weeks, the US dollar has been extremely weak. If we look at the US dollar index, which compares the US dollar to the major currencies, the average of the major currencies, we can see that the US dollar has declined significantly the last two weeks. And of course, that has had substantial effects on these currency pairs. However, on Friday, the U.S. dollar uh, increased. The value of U.S. dollar increased in the U.S. dollar index. And that, of course, will also uh, indicate that we probably will see a shift of the momentum that we have seen the last two weeks. So if we start with the euro and the U.S. dollar, uh, we can see that the euro has had an amazing run the last two weeks. However, on Friday, we see this massive red candle. So this amazing run, this can't continue forever. So we had to have a pullback at some point. And we, it looks like we're going to have this pullback uh, now. So uh, kind of I kind ex of expect this um, pullback to last for at least a week. We will most likely go and retest uh, 50 moving average before we go higher from here. So the reason why we ran into to a resistance here, if we go to the monthly uh, monthly chart, we can see that we ran into the to the 100 moving average exactly at this point. This point, and this has also been a significant trend line uh, or resistant barrier for a very long time. So this market has been trading um, downwards for uh, for a, a long time now, all the way back to 2007. This market has been trading uh, in a downwards spiral, or downwards. Uh, and we can see that if we take a draw line, we can see that we have been here before. So we have tested this uh, area uh, several times, and this is a significant. Um, uh, resistant barrier. If we were to break this barrier, then we'll see um, a shift in this um, uh, uh, in the uh, in the trend of the euro US dollar, which have will basically have significant um, uh, consequences for this currency pair. We may see an end to this downward uh, trend. And we'll basically see a, a upward trend from from here, which means that the U.S. the euro and the U.S. dollar will will see a much higher value. We'll probably go back to uh, these areas areas here of uh, uh, one twenty five, and then we'll go to to uh, one thirty nine, and then we'll go to to uh, one thirty. Uh, 149 and so on. So that means we'll have a significant shift in the relations of this currency pair. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens in, in uh, August if we manage to break this uh, trend line and, and basically end above this trend line, which basically will indicate that we'll have a major shift in these two currency pairs. Um, but, as I said in the beginning, the reason why we saw this massive spike to the upside is because of the U.S. dollar weakness. And um, on Friday, we had a massive surge in the U.S. dollar index, and that made us pull back from this area here. Um, we may see uh, a pullback almost certain we'll see a pullback in the next few trading days. And then we may go higher. 
And it will be very interesting to see whether or not we go higher from here because that is an indication that this is a, a once probably once in a lifetime buy opportunity where you basically just hold your your buy for for a long time, probably two three years, and um, and so on. So it'll be very interesting um, to see. So if we go back to the, the daily chart, we can look at the technical indicators. We can see that the RSI was way overbought. We're still way overbought, and it's heading downwards now. And we will continue downwards and probably get all the way down to 50. We can see that uh, MACD as well. We are starting to to trend downwards and we'll break this. Uh, we'll probably hit this signal line within uh, one or two trading days, we'll, which will indicate that we'll go also lower. The same goes with the Bollinger Band. We had a lot of volatility here uh, on Friday. And we are on the top of the Bollinger Band, indicating that we'll go down from here and we'll go probably all the way down to the bottom, which is at 111. That is quite far down. That is basically this support area here. I don't believe we'll get there. I'll probably we'll hit the 15 moving average and bounce from the 15 moving average. Uh, we can also look at the um, stochastic, and we can see that that. Uh, that we're also about to head downwards from here. So all indicators indicate that we will see a pullback um, in the next few trading days. And we may go higher and we may go lower. At this point, I'm just sitting on the sidelines looking what will basically happen. If we were to bounce from the 50 moving average, then it is um, a, a sign that we'll go higher from here or that we will test this um, top again. So if we look at the uh, Great British Pound and the US dollar, it's kind of the same story. Um, and of course, this has nothing to do with the uh, British uh, economy doing better than the US economy. Uh, the British economy is actually doing much worse than the US economy and will do so in the foreseeable future. They, of course, have problems with the coronavirus, uh, but in the near future, they also have to uh, grasp the problems with Brexit um, and all the trade agreements and um, and relations with Euro, the European Union, and that will have a significant toll on the British economy. So, if you look at a macro uh, as a macro analysis, the British pound should not be here even close to this point. So uh, this is way, way, way overvalued. Um, but we're here. And the reason why we're here is basically because the US dollar has been declined in the last two weeks. So also here on Friday, we see, saw a massive pullback. Not a massive pullback, but we did see a pullback. And if we look at the technical indicators, we also see, similar to the euro, uh, that the RSI is a way overbought, and we are about to head downwards. Uh, we'll probably hit the signal line within two or three trading days, which uh, may indicate we'll go down from here, almost certain of that. We are at the top of the Bollinger Band, and we'll uh, most certain go down. And the stochastic also indicates that we will go down from here. If we look at uh, um, probably uh, two hour charts, we can see that we already have dropped. Or a four hour chart, we see that we are on the way down. So if you look at a four hour chart, we'll probably go and retest uh, a 128 area before, yes going higher from here. Now, if you look at the US dollar and the Japanese yen, we can see that the, um, the US dollar has been taking a beating or this, uh, this pair has been taking a beating for the last, um, for the last two weeks or so. But on the trading day last Friday, we saw this massive spike here. However, the spike ran into resistance at the uh, 20 exponential average. So, so yes, we uh, yeah, we probably 
go higher from here. We'll probably go and test a 15 moving average. But I do expect a little bit of pullback on, on Monday's trade session. But uh, for next week, we'll most likely go higher because most of the indicators in basically indicate that we'll go higher from here. So if we look, for example, at the MACD, we have not crossed the signal line yet, but, we'll, but we will um, on Monday or Tuesday session. We can see that RSI was fairly oversold, and that's why we have this massive spike here. We can also see that MACD, no, the Bollinger Bands, uh, there was a lot of volatility on Friday's session when we had this massive green spike here, uh, green candle there. And this indicates that we also uh, are heading for the upper Bollinger Band. So we, this line will go down and we'll probably go and retest uh, um, uh, 107 thereabout, which was a previous um, area that we were in for uh, quite a long time. Uh, whether or not we break through that, uh, I doubt it because the reason for this massive spike here is because on Friday the US dollar uh, increased in value and and um, and uh, it may well increase in value for the next uh, for the next trading session of next week uh, but it's not expected for the US dollar to uh, to break out due to the monetary policy of the Federal Reserve uh, if we look at the stochastic, we can see that we have this massive spike for now. This is the four hours. If you look at the daily, um, we have the spike here, and as you can see, if we go all the way back to the to the green line, we have quite a, a long way to go. Um, if you look at it, the stochastic, basically indicated where we are going in the future. Um, where momentum is and the momentum is basically to the upside so we will most likely go and and uh, go further from uh, higher from here and hit uh, 50 moving average or uh, this previous run into this previous area here before we go lower so we look at the Aussie dollar and the US uh, we can see that that uh, um, that the Aussie dollar has been on an upward trajectory for uh, quite a long time now. This was all the way back in March, where we bottomed at uh, 0 0.55. And since then, we have just been going upwards. It's been trending upwards. But also on Friday, we can see this massive uh, uh, red candlestick here. But... I do not expect uh, this to break uh, below the 50 moving average. As you can see, this um, this uh, pair has been hucking the uh, 20 exponential moving average for quite a long time. We have tested it numerous times. Once, twice, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight times we have tested it within the last uh, uh, three months. And um, yeah. We'll, ju we'll probably see more of the same. We'll uh, go and test this to uh, 20 exponential moving average and then we'll bounce from there. We can see in the uh, MACD, we have not crossed the signal line. In the we we'll may, may go a little bit lower. We'll probably um, hit the 20 exponential moving average. In the best case scenario here is basically we hit the 50 moving average. In that case, that is a clear signal to to buy. Um, the exponential exponent and the, the RSI indicates that we are we were fairly oversold. We are at 68 at the moment, and we're in a downward trajectory, indicating that we'll go lower from here. Bollinger Band. There's not a lot of volatility in this pair. We got a, lot, a little bit of volatility on Friday's session. Uh, however, we are, this technically indicates that we'll also go lower. And the same goes for the stochastic. So this is buying on the dips. Just technically wait until it 
uh, hits the 20 exponential moving average, which is around uh, 0 uh, 0.70. And uh, in best case scenario, it's um, 0 0.69. So, yes. And lastly, we have the US dollar cat. So we had this massive spike uh, in the period from uh, January to March. And since then, we have just been in trending downwards. We're probably going to do a similar trend line here. And we need to break this trend line for this pair to go um, to get uh, momentum upwards. Um, if we can see that, probably not. Uh, we have um, we have tested uh, this uh, floor twice, this area here. So we are kind of running into a, a descending triangle. And if I were to bet, I'm I would bet that we would break down from here. Um, uh, but the indicators show that we are we were uh, oversold and uh, we are in the upward trajectory and the RSI. The same goes for the MACD. We're about to cross the signal line. Uh, Bullinger bands also indicate that we will most likely go higher. And the same goes for the stochastic also pointing to hires. But we need to break this as um, resistant line here in order to uh, basically go higher. And even, we, even though we break this, we'll probably run into resistance in this area here and also in this area here. So um, this is not a pair that I'm willing to trade at the moment. I'm just going to watch what's going to happen here. If we break this line here, then we'll go uh, much lower. We'll, we'll go to this resistance area here. And then we'll go to uh, to uh, 130, and after that we'll go to 129. So, yes. So I hope you find this uh, video uh, helpful. You're welcome to subscribe to our channel and leave a like. Um, thank you very much, and good luck.